my friends and welcome to another experimental session in Monet Cafe. Like I say, this is more like science to me sometimes than art because I just love playing around with these mediums and materials and um, just seeing what blends well and uh, creates a good surface for pastel painting. Um, today what I'm going to be doing is, I've done this one before and actually shared a video where I, I mix up the... Um, golden fluid acrylics and uh, again this is a color that just works really well as an underpainting quinacridone nickel azo gold it is a mouthful but if you notice these bars here with the paint swatch across it that shows how transparent it is meaning that the luminosity of the paper is going to show through it makes for a really great um, product for an underpainting but i mix this one to one ratio i have it on the top here to um, remind me with this um, golden gel medium fine pumice gel the pumice in it is what gives it the grit that's going to allow pastels to adhere to and if you're very much a beginner in pastels you'll learn very quickly that you can't just do pastels on a smooth surface um, it will just fall off you won't get any layers and you'll get frustrated and wonder why do I see all these other pastel pieces that look so beautiful with color and yours just won't even layer or look very bright um, well that's because you have to have almost like sandpaper, some grit to the paper. Now this is just plain old matte board. I had a lot of extra matte board from a, a framing uh, project that I had. And it is uh, what's called archival, it's uh, acid free. So it is good for long-term um, paintings and longevity. And so I cut it up, the big pieces I have, I just cut it into standard sizes with a big paper cutter. And um, I use it to make my own pastel surfaces. It's cheaper to make your own. And also you can get different, um, uh, family, families of color that you might not get with regular um, pastel papers that you buy. So what I'm going to be doing, if you notice here, I've picked out some acrylics. Now this here that I've used before is fluid acrylic. Um, you see right under the golden um, name, which means it's going to be more liquidy. You can hear it, okay? So it's going to uh, apply more smoothly um, to the surface. These are not fluid acrylics. This is golden open acrylic. And, um, but if you notice the same thing here, I've chosen colors that have that luminous, uh, transparent look. It's, this is very see-through, transparent. Now on the back of the golden acrylics, it'll give you a little scale as to how transparent or opaque. Transparent means see-through, opaque means not see-through. This one's very transparent. It'll also give you a little um, grading on um, how thin or thick it is. And I wanna get one that's not too um, thick let me see this one. I've got to put my glasses on to read it. Um, and I believe this one is probably a little thicker than some of the others. Yeah, it's a little bit more on the thick side. Okay, so this one might not apply as good as this green gold. I don't normally like greens for an underpainting, but I thought because of the transparency and the thinness of it, and this one's still not as thick as the other one, that it might work. And um, then here is Indian yellow. This is M. Graham acrylics. And it doesn't have a thing on the back. It does say transparent, um, which I could tell it was. And um, it may not, it's, it's a little bit thin too. But because these are not as thin as the fluid acrylics, I thought I would try, if you've seen some of my other videos, using clear gesso. Clear gesso is another product that can be used to apply to um, watercolor paper in some of my videos and these boards here. And it has a grit to it as well. So, and it is liquidy like the fluid golden fluid acrylic so if i need to make these thinner when i mix it with this i'm going to use the clear gesso so that's my thinking i hope it works and uh, i'm going to give it a try okay what i'm going to do is use the indian yellow one first because um I like that as an underpainting. You know, I like the uh, complementary colors as an underpainting better than the greens. I do a lot of landscapes, so there's a lot of green already, and yellow or gold or red or orange makes a very good underpainting. So I'm gonna mix up equal portions of these two, and then I'm going to add some clear gesso if it's not thick enough. So, hey, why not just do it right here with me? I do have a palette knife around here somewhere. Um, that I'm going to use to mix with but for now I'm just going to kind of guess it I'm going to put in this is a little teeny board that I'm doing here this is just a little six by four so I don't need much at all it's good to do an experiment here so I think I'm just going to try maybe just about that little there and let me grab my palette knife so I can mix it 
Okay, here's my palette knife. I'm going to open up the fluid acrylic. I'm sorry, not the fluid acrylic, the fine pumice gel. And if you notice, I've got a little piece of saran wrap in here. This stuff uh, dries really hard. And um, if you don't get it off the edges really well, it'll seal itself, cement itself shut to the side. So I just keep a little piece of saran wrap there. This one's falling apart. It does look like the product actually kind of deteriorates the saran wrap. I might have to come up with another method. All right, so I do, it doesn't look like this is clean, but it is. I'm just gonna get a little dollop of the pumice gel, um, kind of equal to the little dollop of paint, maybe a little more. Get off there. All right, that's probably good. It's a little more than the paint, but get the right idea here. I think it'll be close. All right, so we're mixing this up, and what that's doing is it's adding that pumice, which makes the the grit to the paint. Now that is pretty pretty liquidy, but I believe when I mixed it up with the other quinacridone fluid acrylic, it was more liquidy than that. So I am gonna add a little bit of the clear gesso, again, which does have the grit. A little bit of this, just to loosen it up a little bit, okay? So you can see I almost did equal amounts of everything. And I don't know what I'm gonna get here, so I may not be sharing this video. <laughs> All right, so I need to come up with a better way to mix this. Definitely want to get any. If the I think the reason for the fluid acrylic is that you don't get clumps in it, and I don't want any clumps in this yellow. All right, that's probably pretty good. Oops, I actually have a little bit more of this pumice gel on the end there. Let me get that mixed in too. All right, well, as soon as I get this mixed up, I'm going to apply it to the board. All right, so now time to apply it to the mat board. And you could use, um, some artists have used gator board. Um, I just like applying it to something that is a sturdy surface. It's kind of neat to have a pastel painting that is not so flimsy like some of the pastel papers. So this is more durable for shipping and things like that. So, but uh, keep in mind, if you do use matte board, um, it has a side that is rough and a side that is smooth. I actually have accidentally applied it to the rough side a couple of times, and you may like that texture to your painting, but I just prefer to have um, my pastel um, underpainting on the smooth side. So I've got it on the smooth side. Now, all I'm gonna do is take one of these little foam brushes. I'm gonna get this up here, a little bit on the brush. All right, and I'm gonna really press. Sometimes I have to press it with my fingers Oh, look at that. Okay, so we're getting a little bit of that quality that's kind of like the quinacridone gold. We're still getting that glow, uh, pretty glow behind there. All right, I'm liking that. Now I'm gonna flip it around here. Maybe get just a little bit more. And um, this is always a little bit of a tricky part because the stuff does dry pretty quickly. But I think we're gonna result, end up having, um, yeah, see, it's already drying, is having a textured surface that's still got that luminosity to it. So that's pretty neat, I like that one. I think since I have it already mixed up, I'm gonna go ahead, I've got a little scrap piece here that's not really a standard size or anything, um, but sometimes I like having these little odd pieces to just get creative. And um, also, I like giving little paintings as gifts. You know, that's just the neatest little gift to give. Talk about something homemade. Oh yeah, that's already drying already. Awesome, nice. Okay, this one's a little more yellow than when I use this product, but I like it too. Okay, now I think I'm gonna do one in the blue and the green. All right, again, I don't normally like to use green as an underpainting, but this one was just so vibrant. <laughs> and um, this might be neat if I was doing a painting, a landscape that had a different um, mood to it, like a, a night scene that had a lot of blues in it. Um, this might make a, a nice uh, underpainting. So anyway, I'm sure I can come up with something. So same thing. This is now an 8x10 um, piece of matte board. I do have the smooth side and I'm going to start applying. And again, the problem is that it dries very quickly when you're doing a large size 
you're kind of limited um, because you have to try to work so quickly and not have any lines. It will create um, lines if you don't um, get it blended right and fast enough. So I'm trying to work fast and get it all across here. It's kind of hard. Scoot it up. And a little bit of the, the texture of the lines is good, but I try not to have it too awfully consistent. See, that's already drying over, over in here, and I, if I put another stroke on it, it's gonna create a value difference there. So I've kind of got that covered, and I'm thinking that, um, it's got a little dent in it. I'm thinking that if it doesn't have quite enough grit or pumice gel in it, that I could still apply more of this liquid gesso after it's dry, just a coat of that, or even, Perhaps after I apply some pastels, of course we can use our sprayable fixatives sometimes to get another layer in. Okay, so we've got our nice little bright, bright green one. Interesting, okay. Now I'm gonna move on. Well, I've got a little bit more of this green left. Let me see if I have a smaller thing to do. Now on to this beautiful blue that's called Magnes Blue Hue, and the same deal. By the way, I am washing this out and drying it pretty good in between because, of course, we don't want to blend these colors. All right, so you probably noticed my last time I did this, I actually just used the spoon to measure with. Now the next ones that I'm doing are 11 by 14s. I think I'm just going to do one of them. So I'm probably going to mix up about the same amount that I did for the um, green. That seemed to be enough for a few of them. So this, if I do the same amount, should be enough for one 11 by 14. So again, I put about a half of the spoon with the paint. gonna have to work fast with this one again because this is a big one this is bigger the biggest one I've done so far oh isn't that gorgeous look at that wow so pretty oh wow Well, I am quite pleased with how these came out. I have, um, of course, the colors that I already did in the video, uh, but I also wanted to show how close, uh, how similar these are. This is the one that I've originally done and have on uh, some of my videos. I think I have two of them on how to make this surface with that um, quinacridone, Nicolazo Gold, and the pumice gel. And you see, it's really close to that uh, Indian yellow that I used. Actually, it's a little more orange, and I think I'm gonna love that Indian yellow uh, as an underpainting. Also, too, you saw as I did the, uh, the greens, love that green. Um, the blue has a little more stripes in it because it is bigger and it, it is hard to get it applied, but it still has that nice prepared surface. And also, too, I thought I'd show you my failure. I did this one um, prior to making the video and with this beautiful, I think it's called Permanent Rose. It's just a gorgeous bright pink. And um, it had some clumps in the paint. So I think that's what's showing through here. But, you know, my work is so impressionistic that I don't think that's going to matter. I'll paint on top of that. <laughs> so anyway, that was just a really great experiment. I think I I'm definitely going to share a video of me using these. But uh, from what I can see, they work, you know, just as good as when I made um, the surface with the fluid acrylics. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. And look at that bottle. Isn't that just gorgeous? Wow. Most of you guys are color freaks like me, so I just had to buy that. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys had fun and learned something new. And uh, I'm just having a blast sharing these videos with you. All right. Bye. Happy painting. <music>